Frank, you gotta make allowance. I've been telling you ever since the stroke, he's never gonna get any better. Well, we sure at the bottom of the hill now. We sure have. Sarah! The old man's crazy. You two, you've been at it as long as I can remember. Both of you knowing how to vex each other. Eh, this time isn't all that different. You can say that with the whole house stinking of what he did. But you're working yourself to the bone for him. I know that. But why in the name of all that's holy did he have to go and do it in the coal air register? You gonna answer that, little miss? No, Uncle Frank. Why aren't you in there helping your Aunt Martha clean up? I did! A man can't even be gone for one day. Uh, I try to listen for George in the night, Frank. He's just a... so tired. Well, he doesn't need listening for. He needs to be put away. He is your father. Don't you talk so wild. Clara's father, too. You don't see her down here worrying. I know. I know how you feel. Everything always put on your shoulders. Isn't that always the way with the strong ones? Well, that nursing home's clean. I'll say that for it. My own brother has sent him away. That's a hard thing. It's whatever you think best, Frank. Maybe I'm just not thinking right anymore. You're the one's going to have to decide. Uncle Frank? Well, I think Grandpa's getting better all the time. Honest, I do. After what happened last night. Now, what about everything else? Last week, canceled my feed order. Forever messing into something. As long as I can remember, it's been Frank do this, Frank do that. So sure nobody but himself knows as much as how to tie raven wire. Well, I got my own ideas on how this place ought to be run. And if he can't do it anymore, I'm going and I'm going to run it right. You know, someday, this place is going to be ours, yours and mine both. With the deed in his name, he just has to sign it over. The way things are, he could take a crazy notion and sell it right out from under us. But he wouldn't. We can't know that. We can't, Sarah. He's not sound half the time. A doctor would see it that way. So would a judge, one of those... those legal hearings that decide things like that. And you'd tell the same lies you've been telling all over town, wouldn't you? I haven't said a word that isn't true, not to anybody. Joey told me. You heard him at the barber shop. All of them laughing at Grandpa. He doesn't walk around naked as a jaybird all the time. Just that once. So you did lie. Now you watch how you talk to me, miss. You've been planning all along. Telling lies all over Williams so everyone will be on your side at the hearing. Now you shut your mouth. Leave her go, Frank. Come here to me, sir. <laughs> and where's the fell out coming to the rescue? Lean on me, Grandpa. not to do anything to make Frank mad. Whatever it was, I sure riled you. You mean you don't remember? Oh, Grandpa? Oh, Sarah. Sarah. Remember how it was when your daddy and mother had the accident? I found you crying. Just like this, we made friends, remember? Everything's going to be all right, honey. You'll see. But Frank's going to put you in the nursing home. I knows I can't leave the farm. I was born here. I'm going to die here. Sis, too. He's 
not after Aunt Martha, just to you. Because he wants to run things his way. Already does, sir. Already does. Run this place for years. Tell you what. Frank starts acting up, I'll just take my good old truck and head out for Clara and that doctor she married. Yeah, sure will. You're cogitating on something, I can tell. Sure do put me in mind of your daddy looking like that. George Jr. was a real thinker. thought I'd do it, didn't you? Never did bother to know me thinking I'd hurt a little girl. She was scared, Frank. A little scared never hurt anybody. You sure gave me my share. Sarah's different. Just like her daddy. Yep. Pa. Pa. I talked to the bank again. They like my figures. They're willing to back us for the new combine. It took me till 1954 to get my land out of Hock, that bank. More than 35 years. Pa, it's different now. This isn't a depression anymore. 35 years. Hampshire Prince settled down at the county fair yet? Gonna start telling me how to handle my hog, too? I don't remember ever missing the county fair before. I'll be taking him over pretty quick now. I think I got a fine chance at a first this year. How many times do I have to say it? You leave the accounts alone, just leave them be. You can't even add two and two half the time. You mind your words, boy. You never did get more than C in arithmetic, and you know it. And I can add two and two. Four. Two and two is four. Two and three is five. Two and two and two and two is four. Two and three is five. Two and four is six. Can I speak to the director, please? Ms. Bennett, this is Frank McDermott. That's right, his youngest boy. Like I was saying, Pa had a stroke a couple of months ago. Oh, you heard, huh? Well, he's not coming back from it too good, Miss Bennett, and uh, my Aunt Martha is just getting too much for her. I'd like to come talk to you about moving him into the home. No, not this week. There's a uh, county fair and another state. Week from Wednesday? Fine, two o'clock. wins today and gets to take Hampshire Prince to the state fair. Why don't you go down to Springfield with him? No, I'll see, Sarah. Well, you can visit Aunt Mildred and have a real rest. Now, here's the entry form. It'll go right on the top. So when you deliver my pickled peaches, you can give it to Mrs. Pilcher. Oh, the minute you go near her, she's all over you. Well, you could deliver them yourself. Griff is fine this morning. Yes, thank the Lord. George! Hello, George! Hey, 
Good morning, Nia. Hi, you guys are real good. Hi, Sarah. Yeah. Hey, George, look. Hey, Kelly. Hi. Oh, boy, what have we here? Pickled peaches, I bet. Yeah. Oh, I wish they'd come on. They'll be judging the hogs pretty quick, and Frank's just got to win. Your grandpa sure is better than we've been hearing. I know you keep saying those stories aren't true, but... Well, they aren't. Joey, Frank's gonna use those stories, Joey, to put Grandpa away. And what we gotta do is to get a doctor to say... Well, that his mind is all right. Well, your grandpa's awful old. Maybe he belongs in a home. Joey Brewster! Okay, okay. I'll help you get him into Willard and see Doc Kincaid somehow. We're not going to take Grandpa to him. He just called Frank. We're taking him to Chicago. Chicago? <laughs> Have you gone as crazy as your Grandpa? Chicago's clear across the states. Don't you call him crazy. so uptight about it. It's not your hug. Yeah, but if Frank doesn't win, our whole plan's a goner. What plan? Frank got to go to the state fair. And our wife has got to go with them. Or else how can we get Grandpa to Chicago? Pray, Joey, pray. Richard lives in Chicago. Now, just how are you and me, all by ourselves, going to take a sick old man that long way? Well, it's Grandpa himself thought of it, Joey. Well, he thinks fine most of the time. Sarah, I got this strange feeling. I want to know right now what we're supposed to go to Chicago in. Because no matter what you say, I'm not snitching my dad's car. Grandpa thought of that, too. Come on! See? Grandpa's old truck. Ah, there you go again, taking things for granted, like always. Now, what if your Aunt Martha doesn't go down to Springfield with Frank? What if your Aunt Clara's doctor husband won't help? Grandpa well, always says you got to have a contingency plan, and I do. For real, anyway. Well, I found us an old map so we can stick to back roads. Well, you got one broad idea, at least. Because the sheriff will be on our tails for sure once we're missed. You got any what? You got any money, I said. I've got us enough for maybe a used battery, about a buck left over, but that's it. I've got my babysitting money. What do we need it for? We'll be there by nightfall. Gas, Sarah. Gasoline. I don't know. You always make these wild plans sound so logical to begin with. Things go wrong, and I'm the one who loses. My allowance, usually. Last time for a whole month. Can't we siphon gas out of the tractor? Well, I can find us enough money to fill up the tank on the way. And for contingencies. And all I have to do is get this old hunk of junk to run. 
Well, you can do it, Joey. I know you can. One dollar, two dollars, two twenty-five, two fifty, seventy-five, three, and six cents plus nineteen. Uh, in the counting house, counting out our money. <laughs> Hi, Grandpa. Mm -hmm. Did you have a nice nap? Mm. I remember, sir, what I did the other day. I wouldn't think a man would ever forget doing such a thing. Never mind. No, they'll forget getting Frank's goat like I did. But you think your old grandpa's a real skunk? Frank's the skunk. No, sir, you shouldn't talk about grown-ups like that. Especially, you're not your own uncle. Well, you get mad at Frank all the time. And you just said. Grandpa? Hmm? Would it be okay if Joey fooled around with your old truck? Well, sure. Born with a wrench in his hand, that Joey. Well, then I was thinking, well, once he gets it running again, well, maybe, in a couple of days, How'd you like to go on a picnic with us? Beats me why well, you two want this mean old man along. But I sure do accept the invite. Aunt Martha won, I'll bet. Go on, go on. Think I can't walk out the porch by myself. Look at him, moving about all by himself. George, I think I'll go to Springfield tomorrow with Frank. Matter of fact, I'm going to go call Mildred and tell her to expect me. Tomorrow? Well, Frank wants to go early. Give Hampshire Prince a chance to rest up before the state judges see him. Oh, I'd better call Francis, too. We'll need her here every day while I'm gone. Of course, now, George, I don't need to stay more than the one night. Could come back on the bus if I had to. Okay, come on, come on. Okay, keep coming, keep coming. That's good. Can you look at him? I have to shampoo him all over again tonight. Shampoo kids can't do anything with him. Okay, Joey? Yeah, just bang my elbows off. Aunt Martha is going with Frank to Springfield tomorrow. She might come back the day after. So we gotta go tomorrow, too. You think you could have the truck ready in time? Yeah, I got the battery this morning. Yeah, I sure as hell can if it takes me all night. Only you better spend all night praying those rotten tires hold up. Uh, all right, 
note to Francis with Mildred's phone number on it right here, so you'll have it too. And I'll call you tonight, see how Grandpa is, just in case. Should I get your suitcase? Mm. Well, you know how Frank is when you keep him waiting. <laughs> oh, and don't you forget Grandpa's medicine before bedtime. Yes, ma'am. Saving this varmint for Sam, he'd get his feelings hurt if I was to throw him away. He always looks so proud bringing him in. Him? How many of you have saved? About ready to go, George. I'll get your suitcase. Come on out on the porch and wave us goodbye. Now, don't you forget while I'm gone. You take your medicine. Remember, you're supposed to drink plenty of fluid. Got you in plenty of root beer. Uh, now, don't you forget your afternoon nap, hmm? Sarah, don't you leave those breakfast dishes for Francis again. That's the only chore I've asked you to do all summer. Give him hell. Yeah, Pa. We're taking you on that picnic, Grandpa. Right now. Bring me my straw hat. So I was in a hurry. Never rushed a picnic in all my born days. Uh, okay, George, let's stop at the mailbox on the way. I thought you said this was his idea. Joey! That was all about? It was Francis coming to work. Oh, great. 
And what's she gonna think when she gets to an empty house? You two are up to something. Well, she won't be worried. I left her a note until she goes out and gets the mail and finds my letter to Aunt Martha. But then we'll be clear out of the county. Up to something considerable more than going on a picnic. Well, we thought we'd just... We thought we'd just go on up to Chicago, Grandpa. It was your idea. You said that if Frank should ever try to put you in the nursing home, that you'd go to Aunt Clara's. Frank's not gonna do any such thing, child. And I don't know as I'm up to a trip like that. I've been mighty sick for some long while, you know. Well, we'll take awful good care of you. Won't we, Joey? And Frank is gonna put you in the nursing home. He is. Well, he's been telling stories on you all over Williard, exaggerating things. He'll do the same to Doc Kincaid and the judge. Exaggerating? What things? Well, like what you did the other night. I heard him talking to the nursing home the very next day. It's not as if I'd ever do Frank harm. Everything will be fine as soon as we get to Aunt Clara's. Well, Uncle Richard will say you're sound and, well, everything will be fine. Aren't you getting better every day? Now, look, if we're going to go, we're wasting time. So what's it going to be? I've only met Clara's Richard a couple times. He is a good enough doctor, all right. And I... I am getting better. I am. Aren't I, Sarah? Okay, Joey, let's go. Just thank me going to Chicago. Ahead. We've got to get off this main road. Look at the map and see where it goes to. Ah, oh, the one thing I figured you'd done right. Forgot it. You any interested in some advice? Yes, sir. Turn off here, go east 195 miles, turn north, you can't miss Chicago. Well, I guess you've been there pretty often, huh? Mm. Some anyway. First time when I was about your age. Went to the big lake. It was as good as the ocean. It was sand and all. You made me a pebble collection that day. Real smooth they were. Looks like your grandpa was right. It's starting to rain already. Oh, it'll blow over. Don't have many. We'll have to share. Grandpa? Grandpa? Ginger ale? Root beer get down nice. Got any root beer? No, just ginger ale. You know root beer is my favorite. Sure, I forgot to check the gauge when we left. It's broke anyway. Well, it can't be too far. The way you're driving, like molasses. We're running faster on this kind of road, we'll blow a tire. Is that what you want? What now? The windshield wipers aren't working either. Joey, it's not gonna rain.
I can't see a thing. We go into a ditch, we pat it. I think we better just sit this one out. Some picnic. Never fails, go on a picnic always rains. Grandpa, we're not going on a picnic. We're going on Clara's, remember? That's nice. Wake me up when we get there, Martha. Sarah! She gets us mixed up sometimes, that's all. He'll be okay after his nap. He's been napping all day. We're taking him to a doctor, aren't we? Yeah, but at this rate, we won't get there till midnight. You didn't tell your Aunt Martha where we were going, did you? In that letter you wrote? No, of course not. I just thought she ought to have something when we don't turn up. So I said that Frank is a liar and a sneak, and that he's trying to put Grandpa away, and that we're going to do something about it. We can't go home now, Joey. Not until we see Uncle Richard. Sure would like to see Frank's face when he reads that letter. <laughs> What's it say? It's addressed to me, Frank. Let me see. I wish the police had called back. I think they might have called the Brewsters. They're as worried as we are. Joey's only 14, you after just all. just told the police, Aunt Martha. Give them a little time. What is going on in her head? Are they going to get themselves a lawyer? That's what said something to her about a legal hearing. Frank, I think we ought to tell Clara. I'm damned if I will. I know you two don't get along. You never have. Lord, how long is it since you even said three words to each other? But anything could be happening to your father right now. Sure it could. A, a relapse, even another stroke. But Sarah ought to be whipped at Joey, too. Please, Frank, just so Clara'd know. Maybe she won't even drive down and be here, just in case. All right, caller. God knows what shape Pa's in by now. Somebody's got a push and you're not big enough. Well, I only drove Frank's tractor that once. It's okay. Just remember to rock it. First, then reverse. Then first, then reverse, okay? Okay. Stand back, Mr. McDermott, okay? Let's go, Sarah. Like we won't be going to Chicago after all, sir. You stripped the gears, you dumbhead. All of them? All of them. What do you mean, all of them? If you strip one, you strip no, them all. That's no, enough, son. Sarah's just trying to do her best. It might be just she didn't strip them all. A cluster here could be working, okay? Hey, yeah, we wouldn't have reverse or low, but. Please get back in the truck, okay? Sure hope we have some gears left. Stay 
road coming up and we're taking it. I don't care where it goes. Hey, I remember from the map. Corona's north. I'll tell you. And if it is, we're right on, Joey. Joey, what time is it? Uh, supper time. Well, I've got $22 and some. But you've got a dollar. Do you think stay in a motel? Well, not a need to. We gotta buy gas tomorrow. Look for one of those old tourist places. It'd be cheaper, wouldn't it? I just hope we can find a place to park where we don't have to back out. I swear, I think you like to worry. Well, somebody has to think ahead, and you sure aren't. There's a place. That looks okay, I guess. Well, I don't usually take people in this hour of the day, but well, there's one room up there I suppose I could let you have. Place is pretty well filled up with my regular people. That's all I can look after. Room is on your left. The old man's sick? Now, this isn't a nursing home, you know. Yes, Mr. Strickmark. I mean, no, Mr. Strickmark. He's not sick. He's just worn out. Leave me be, Martha. Now, you be a good boy, George. Now, lie down on the bed. Oh. It's okay, Grandpa. Okay. Are you okay? That's it. Oh. That's it. Names in place of residence. Um, oh. Brown from Peoria. Now, I keep a class establishment here. It's not like one of them new motels. So it's only two to a room. Where's that boy that's driving the old rattle trap going to sleep? Uh, my brother can sleep in the truck, I guess. Well, that'll be $8 in advance. If you want supper, it's $1.50 each. All you can eat. The girl's got to heat it up special anyhow, seeing as you're so late. The coffee is extra. Okay, two suppers will do us. No coffee. I parked out back so we can uh, just head straight out in the morning. Now, the bathroom's down the hall. There's only one bed. You're sleeping in the truck. Sarah. I forgot. Quick, Joey, get some water. Huh? Grandpa's got dehydration. He's got what? Get some water. Okay. Oh, Grandpa, how could I forget? Ah, sure, Ed, I know you will. It's just... See, that hog's the best chance I had for first in years, and well, it's used to me handling it. And... It's Clara, Frank. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 I'm still here, Ed. Uh, there, uh... There's one thing more. What's the... Oh, uh, uh, he gets skittish if you prod that right shoulder too much. No, it looks more and more like he'll be here for the day tomorrow. Yeah. Anything comes up, you call, huh? Right. Frank? Clara? Hello, Frank. Richard? Frank? You haven't changed much in seven years? You either. Look, just what is all this about? Aren't you both worrying too much? After all, Sarah does know Dad needs special care. He's only a kid for crying out loud. You know, for yourself, you've done right in taking her in to begin with. Aunt Martha. Yes, well, Sarah's a little scared that Frank... We were going to have George declared incompetent and put him in the nursing home. And where are you, Frank? Yes, I was. And I will yet. For heaven's sakes, what he's reason? He's acting crazy. He's acting crazy. He's up every night, no matter how often we tell him to call us if he needs something. I'm scared he's going to fall and break a hip. You know my ledgers. I don't know where we are from week to week. But why didn't you write us that? We could have at least sent money for extra help, a hospital bed beside something. Well, I knew it. 
I just knew you'd sail in here and tell us what to do and how to do it. Frank. You're not cleaning him up. Haven't I foxed him to boot? You try it for a while. You handle things here, and I'll clear on out the way you did and have myself a high old time. That's not fair. All right, cool it, huh, Clara? No, I won't cool it. I didn't just clear out, Frank. I got married. That's right, Clara, you got married. It would have been so easy and right, damn it, for you to give Sarah home. Nah. If I had to have Sarah with him. What do you think's how to raise her all these years with Pa running down like a clock? But I couldn't possibly have helped Richard with the clinic and taken Sarah, too. And anyway... Anyway, you were plain glad to slide out from under, and you know it. Now, look, please, that all happened a long time ago, can't we? Yeah. I'm sorry, Aunt Martha. We should have realized. He knows I'll be at the bar. He's not going to die or anything, is he? Don't be stupid. Didn't I get nearly four glasses down him? Or almost. Sweet, now. What's your names? Mine's Hildy. I'm Sarah, and this is my brother, Joey Brown. Come on back to the kitchen. Stew's warming on the stove. What room she put you in? The one at the top of the stairs? <laughs> you might know the old bat. It's the worst room in the house. Could I have another piece of bread? What do you know? We can talk. Here I was thinking your big brother was a mute, Sarah. Wouldn't that be a shame? Seeing as how he's such a good looker. How old are you, Joey? Fifteen. Hmm. Had your figure for at least sixteen. Shoulders you got on you? Where are you all headed for? Chicago. Joey! Uh, my dumb sister here forgot the map. So maybe if you could tell us which way to go in the morning? I'm not your dumb sister. And I think you're... shameless, that's all. Hey, I wish it was fun in your brother. Fifteen's too young, even for me. I boiled up some chicken for tomorrow. You want to take the old man some of the broth? Do like she says, little sister. Soup's just what Grandpa needs. Uh, you come back here, Joey. Stay away from her, Joey Brewster. She's not nice. Sarah, just shut up, will you? She's the nicest thing that's happened to me all day. All week. All year, even. Joey! Oh! Oh, Sarah, I am so sick of you and your problems.
to do yet, honey. Don't be in such a rush. I brought some broth for you. Frantic by now, and I, I'm not exactly in prime steer condition. But that's my fault. I forgot your root beer. Even back home, I'm wearing Martha down, child. But that's my fault too. I don't help out enough. But I will from now on. Well, sir, that's just fine. But what I'm saying is, to be French, right? I do belong in a home. No! Not the hell of a lot of good for much else. But you are! I need you! You can't leave the farm! Oh, Sarah. I was teasing you before. You're growing up so fast. But I still need you. You know things you always have. Like, remember the time I bought Aunt Martha that Snoopy kid scarf for her birthday? And you told me how I hadn't picked right for her, but only for myself. But it's true. Well, what about the time Sue Ann Logan was mean to me in school? And I asked you how I could get back at her? And you said I shouldn't be thinking about how I could get back at her, but why she was being mean in the first place. We figured it out, you and me. And afterwards, she wasn't mean to me anymore. Uh, I remember. Talking so wise to a little child, and hearing my own words. There's a far peace between saying and doing. We'll get to Aunt Clara's tomorrow morning, Grandpa. Don't make us go back, please. All right, sir.
if they ever hear about it back in William. Well, Grandpa wanted the John and got Miss Stickelmeyer's room instead. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Could have ended up farming anyhow. We weren't talking about Frank, Grandpa. We weren't talking at all. Were we? You gotta understand it about him, you know. Everything always come hard to Frank. Or never come at all. Like college. Grandpa? But it's important, Sarah. I've been giving it some thought. See, when it come time for Frank to go to college, money'd all been paid out for your daddy. Like I say, farming was what Frank was meant to do, but still he might have liked a choice. So he knew it was what he wanted. Yes, Grandpa. Sarah, where do they live? Uh, 5748 Kimbar. Where's that? Near the university. Must be. Sarah, where's the university? The university's over by the lake, so what you want to do is turn right. Maybe we don't have time not to, Sarah. You want to go to the beach, Mr. McDermott? Richard's going into town. I got him an appointment with Dr. Kincaid to talk about that. What the hell's he think he's going to learn there? Where are they? What'll they do if Dad collapses? Or what if he dies? That'd be a relief to you, wouldn't it? How am I supposed to answer that? No matter what you'll think like Sarah, that I hate him. No, I know better. I know you don't hate him. Look, Clara, it's just this place. It's not like when we were kids anymore. Farming's changed. I need to 
expand, get more acreage, buy, rent. I need a combine. The bank will go along. They believe in me. The pa... He believes in you, Frank. I know he does. You don't know. Not the first thing about it, you don't. What's been going on these past years? Nowadays, you either compete with all the damn agribusiness or you go broke. Now, the time's coming, Clara, soon. Well, not just Pa, but all of us might have to clear out. Dear God, I plowed my life into this land. And so was he. You're alike, Frank. You're just alike. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe so. And maybe you think this sounds hard, but damn it, his years are over. I still got me a good many to go. Maybe my best years if they're here. Now, you tell me, Clara. You tell me what's fair. Uncle Richard like? Never met him. Huh? Must have been some fight he had with Frank. What was it about? Me, I guess. Who would take old Lord from me in? The only one who wanted me was Grandpa. Start your pebble collection again? I found some you can have. So give me your hanky. Sarah, supposing you had to depend on me for something important. I mean, real important. Would you, Sarah? That's what I was telling you last night. No, I mean like practical things. Could you depend on me or would you be scared to? Now that's just silly. Here are your pebbles. You ready to go? University. It's got to be around here someplace. There it is. Hold it. Hold it. We're going the wrong way. Please back up. This is a one-way street. You'll have to back up. Back up, please. Oh, no, and I can't back us up. Bravo, don't you hear, good kid? I said, back it up. And then wait for me when you get around the corner. Officer? Reverse doesn't work. You got a neutral? Yes, sir. Use it.
Got it to the right. Sharp right. Come on. Okay. Okay, cut it in. Come on. License? I haven't got one. I haven't got a license, the registration's out of date, and the gears are half busted. So I guess you better arrest me, and just me, because they're innocent. That's not true. Well, Grandpa is... Where are you from? Peoria. No, sir, you don't lie to policemen. We're from over to Williard, officer. Come to see my daughter, Clara. Clara... Hirsch, Hirschman. Um, 5748 Kimbar. Only we can't find it. How did I ever lose that name? My own daughter. Follow me. Where do you think he's taking us? Jail. Oh, it's not your fault. Now tell him. They went out of town last night. Back to Claire's old farm. Will you? Some family emergency, I think. And after we fixed the tire, we just tried the truck, and second and third gears were still working, so. We just kept on going. And then last night, we uh, stayed in a boarding house on the way. How are you feeling, sir? Could use a bath and a shave, I guess. They're not here. They went to Williard. Aunt Martha must have called them, or maybe Frank. Get in, Sarah. We're going home. No! Afraid if this truck goes much of anywhere, you're going to have to haul it there. Frank will have talked to them by now. They'll be on his side. We gotta find somebody. Get in, sir. We better follow you at the precinct station, officer. We'll call my boy Frank from there. He'll he'll take care of everything. <laughs> Machine, get one of these, best ride I ever had. Yeah. <laughs> I love good to see you. <laughs> yeah, I'm my mind. Mind. Hey, how'd you do? Stay fair of that hog yours, Frank. Well, how do I know? He's probably standing in the ring this very minute. Me not there. Mind about that hog yours. Richard. Not in the house. 
I'm sorry, Sarah. I'm sorry. Let me know what you get back. Your allowance, I mean. Maybe I can make it up to you. Never mind that. No, I didn't want to do this, but I'm glad I did. We did. But it was worth a try. I'll always be glad. Folks waiting on you, boy, at home. I'll say... Joey? I think you're neat. Yeah, well, same back. I'll see ya. You and me are due for a reckoning, little miss. Uncle Frank? You gonna decide about Grandpa now? Talk to him a little and listen to his heart. It's really remarkable how well he stood up to that trip. But of course, his heart isn't the problem. When I uh, talked to Dr. Kincaid this morning, he, he admitted that he hadn't really laid it out all for you. He said that George was an old friend of his. and We discussed the medical history, the losses of memory and the aberrant behavior. Isn't that what I've been telling you ever since you got here? Yeah, it is. Dr. Kincaid and I both agree that all of these things, they are early signs of senile dementia. Well, what is senile, whatever you said? He won't get better. No. I still have some good days, maybe a lot of them, but... Uh, then he could be found legally incompetent. The truth is, yes. Put Dad through a public humiliation like that, and you'll kill him. At least this way. Well, can't go on forever, Frank. Nah, just till it's too late. Too late for what? What are you gonna do? I'm tired of explaining to you. And I am sick to death of having to feel guilty. you're in bed, Pa. You know, I always like to walk when I'm thinking, Frank, you know that. Pa. You gotta be tired. Come on to bed. We got a problem, you and me. But we can solve it. I'm willing if you are. What are you talking about? What do you think I'm talking about, you damn fool? You and me and the farm, that's what I'm talking about. But the land in trust, Frank. With a guarantee it'll be yours to manage for as long as you want. That way Martha and Sarah will always be sure of a home. And all the income, all the things you've been hoping for, will be your way from now on, Frank. But you got to guarantee me one back. you got to promise me I ain't going to die anyplace else. Oh, 
always said you got the short end of the stick, son. I figure, I figure you were right. Deal. made myself a deal. Funny thing to be all set up about choosing where you're gonna die. Life's not gonna put me away after all. How come? You'll find out soon enough. It's true, Sarah. Believe me, it's true. Oh, Grandpa. I've been thinking about you too, child. You're in for a lot of lecturing about how wild and plain foolish you were taking me out of Chicago. And you listen good, because you sort of were. But just remember this, little Sarah. When it comes right down to it, you did a good thing. I'm tired. Well, let's go back to the house. Where's that joy? He say something about that old truck of mine. Sure did. Well, he'll be around. We'll take on that picnic yet.